kiddos, and welcome to another super swell episode of Cooking with Koopa. With me, your host, Koopa. Who are you and why are you here? Koopa, there's no time to dilly-dally. I am you, but from the future. A future Koopa, if you will. I come to warn you of a great and terrible danger. I'm confused. Who are you again? Jesus Christ. Okay, just listen to me very carefully. The dish that you created two episodes ago, the dragon dish, it has culinary scientists across the world trying to recreate it, and so they created artificial dragons just to do so. That doesn't sound that bad. But those scientists got greedy. They created more dragons than a nation could handle. Dragons soon swarmed the earth in what is now known to be called the Dragonocalypse. Still doesn't sound that bad to me. Are you kidding me? I was sent here, back in time, to talk to you, past Koopa, to urge you to call the Pentagon and ask them, beg them, to halt any dragon-related research. Why did you wait two episodes to tell me? Because I thought it would be so fitting for the tasty dish you're about to create. And why are you wearing a lab coat? Because all chefs are scientists in the future. Duh. Whatever. I'm gonna keep the show rolling if that's okay with you. No, you can't. You don't have much time. Here, take this phone. It'll connect you directly to the Pentagon of your time. Oh no. I can only stay in the past for three minutes and I've wasted too much time on exposition. That doesn't make much sense. It's called a plot device, duh. Here, take the phone. That was a thing that happened. <laughs> Anywho, I'm not gonna let some future Koopa stop me from teaching you fine folks how to make some tasty treats for your next post-apocalyptic party. Fitting, I know. Today on the menu, we have Yum Yum Deviled Eggs from Fallout 3 and Sunset Sarsaparilla from Fallout New Vegas, if you prefer superior games. Let's put the future behind us and get some egg smashing shit on this table. Since the dishes we're creating are so complicated, we're gonna need all the kitchen supplies we can muster and then some. Parties are always fun, but it can be a downer when your guests are hungry. You don't want Jim being a little bitch in the corner saying, I'm hungry, where's the chips? When can I go home? Ugh, the nerve of some people. Anywho, we're gonna start with our first tantalizing appetizer, yum yum deviled eggs. But first, we need some eggs. Oh, cameraman, chop chop. What do you think this is, some small gathering? A shindig? It's a party, you uncultured swine. We're gonna need more eggs than that, and more eggs, and more eggs after that. Ah, that's better. You wanna make sure you have plenty of eggs for your needy guests. Now we're gonna take these eggs, throw them in a pot of boiling water, add some salt, and hard boil these babies so they're ready to be deviled. So we have our big pot of water, we have our eggs, and we have some salt right here. So we're going to add our little eggies into our pot and add some salt and let those babies boil. Let's do it. Oh shit! We're gonna try that one more time because the cameraman dropped some eggs. Perfect. Now it's time to add the salt. And now we're just gonna wait for it to boil. Shouldn't you turn on the heat? What's the name of this show? Cooking with Koopa. That's right, and who's Koopa? You are? Koopa's the host, and that would be me. So why don't you let the talent work her magic, okay? Okay. Okay. What are you doing? All right, so let's see how our eggies turned out. The stove wasn't on. Why didn't you tell me the stove wasn't on? 
Koopa, I did tell you. Are you saying I'm lying? No, 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 I'm not saying you're lying. That's it. Time out for you. Get in the hole. No, no. Koopa, it's cold and miserable in there. In. Oh. You're going to think about what you Are. I've been looking for you. I mean, no, I haven't. Um, <laughs> while you were gone, I had so much extra time that I made a second appetizer. Here we have our yum yum deviled eggs as planned, and then I also made iguana on a stick. Mmm. You really can taste the radiation. My guests will surely feel the years being shaved off their lives. Mmm. Oh, it's time for us to make the sunset sarsaparilla. Let's go. Can I eat something first? No, no, no. There's so much work to be done. You can eat later. Those are for guests. Now that we have our delicious appetizers, we need to make something to wash it down with. I mean, you could serve water at your party and be a fucking basic bitch, but we don't want that, do we? I don't want the hole again. <laughs> Maybe later. All right, so we have our empty jar to make our sunset sarsaparilla in, and we have all of our ingredients. We have ginger root that's already been peeled, lemon, sugar, water of course, vanilla extract, yeast, and fennel and star anise. Now, a few of you may know, or maybe not, that we need sassafras and licorice root for this recipe. However, those can be kind of hard to come by, and you being lowly microwave chefs and all, I assumed that you would need a recipe that you could improvise with, so I've done it for you. Instead of sassafras and licorice root, I'm using fennel seed and star anise, and I'm sure it'll turn out just the same. <laughs> you might say, Koopa, this sounds really complicated. How can you help an aspiring chef such as myself? Fret not, my young apprentices. All you need to do is take all of your ingredients and shove them in the bottle. No need for a distillery, heavy machinery, actual craftsmanship. No, no, no. Just one simple recipe so that one day you can be as magnificent as me. But let's face it, you're never going to be as magnificent as me. All right, let's pack this jar full of culinary genius, shall we? Here we go. So first we have some ginger. In the bottle it goes. Then we have some sugar. Now this is a full eight ounce cup. A full teaspoon of vanilla extract. A lemon, which we will cut and squirt the juices into. Now it doesn't matter if the lemon seeds get in here because we are gonna strain this in a little bit. And I try to get it in the bottle. So this is a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna have to put in of those and the yeast is gonna feed on the sugar and now our improvision we're going to take a couple of these cute little star annies look at them they're so adorable we're gonna drop those in there eh, we'll do one more for good measure some fennel seeds that looks good perfect add your water now that we have all of our ingredients in our bottle, we're going to put it in the refrigerator and let it brew for, let's see here, four days? F all right, back in you go. But Koopa, why? Back in you go, because you're the genius who found that recipe, now in the hole. Oh. Don't worry, this will give you plenty of time to think about what you've done. And I'll be back for you in four days. Koopa, I haven't eaten anything. You may want to ration this. Mm -hmm. You see, I told you it'd be only four days. No, not again. All right, now that our sarsaparilla has been brewing and our cameraman is back from urgent care right as rain, we should try our creation. I've poured a little bit out for myself right here for tasting. Oh. 
That is some flavor. Oh man, that's some flavor. Well, you know, I prepared for this and have a better, even simpler recipe. Oh, we're gonna try that one instead. We're gonna try that one instead. I need a minute. Oh. Oh. All right, so we have all of our ingredients for our next better sunset sarsaparilla recipe. in the refrigerator and let it hang out for about an hour, which is a lot better than four days because somebody was thinking ahead. After all, I am the chef. Our sarsaparilla is done brewing, so let's give it a try. Mmm, so refreshing. And there you have it, folks. Tasty treats fit for a nuclear party. Be sure to follow my easy to use recipes in the description below. Let's take a look at our past episode creations made by viewers. Oh look, it's the Pokemon Professor. He tried to make our sea salt ice cream popsicles, but it doesn't look like it turned out very well. Better luck next time, Professor. Let's see who else is on the list. It's our cameraman, the Cooking with Koopa cameraman. He, he put it in a skillet. If I recall, there wasn't even a part in the recipe, in the directions, where you had to do that. So I don't know what he was thinking. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Not everyone can be as great as me, especially the cameraman, who we had to put in the hole two or three times in this episode because, well, we all know our cameraman, don't we? It seems that those are the only the only creations we have to show you this week. Well, if you decide to make this week's creations or past creations from other episodes of Cooking with Koopa, please be sure to tweet it at me with the hashtag Cooking for Koopa, and you could be in the next episode, and I will judge thee. So you better do a good job. Well, that's all the time we have here today at Cooking with Koopa with me, your host Koopa. But be sure to subscribe so you never miss a delicious dish. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Can I eat now? Uh, didn't they feed you at the hospital? You told them I was allergic to food. Are you not? No. I guess you can then. <sighs> Jesus, at least be civilized.